Since the Rocking Horse Dreams is doing his series on Cuba Libre's sister game, uh, Distant Plane, I thought it would be fun to do an over homage of his exploration type videos and explore uh, Cuba Libre right here, right now, uh, especially since I hope to be playing it in person this weekend. And so I'm trying to get uh, comfortable enough to be able to play it um, with others and teach them on the fly without boring them by uh, looking too many things up. So I've actually started the game already because I decided to do that before I decided to videotape it. Um, I was, I need to be videotaping that. Uh, it was just, it was hard to say goodbye to um, Smiley. And so it took me a while to, to finally take down her pieces. Just did that today. But anyway, so Cuba Libre here now pretty interesting so far. I'm enjoying it. Uh, we had a very early propaganda card. If you see right here, it was turned up. I guess it's like the third card. Propaganda. Um, propaganda, for those who don't know, there's four of those in the deck. Those are going to kind of time the game. Um, you don't know where they are. It's kind of like gumball rally. Um, and when they come up, you see if you know, if someone's won, because people have different victory conditions. You don't need to just get your victory condition, though. You have to have your victory condition and also have a proper propaganda card come up. Propaganda, victory, resources, and then they get resources and whatnot. All this stuff happens. So a um, little bit about this game. I don't know if I should talk to you as though you're a, you're familiar with Andy and Abyss or not. I guess since I'm I'm overly homaging Rocking Horse Dreams. I'll try and tell you all the rules because that's what he did in his A Distant Plane video. Um, yes, and I'm a super big fan. So, we have four different sides. Each side is a different color, and the four different sides are each uh, an organization that has an interest in the history of a particular locale in all of these games. So, in Andy and Abyss, it was Colombia, in Cuba Libre, it's Cuba and in a distant plane, it's Afghanistan. And there's gonna be more in the series and blah, blah, blah. This series is called the COIN series. COIN stands for counterinsurgency. So uh, all of these, these events are, involve some sort of insurgency or insurgencies. And in this case, as in Annie and Abyss, and I think as well as a distant plane, it's multiple insurgencies. So we have four sides. One side is blue. It's the government and their cubes because the government is square. Uh, the other sides are all cylinders. They're octagonal cylinders of different colors. And the reds, as in Annie and Abyss, are the leftists. Um, and, and in this case, they're 26 July, which is very dear to my heart. Um, and historically, they ended up winning. Uh, the yellows, they're El Directorio, and uh, they are, they're interesting. They're, they're a, a center-leaning insurgency. So they, they're just, try, you know, they're, they're doing like guerrilla tactics in order to, um, to have balance, which I think is pretty fun. And then, whereas in and in Abyss, you had drug cartels, um, and I think in A Distant Plane, you have warlords, if I recall. In this, you have um, the syndicate, the crime syndicate, and they have all these casinos here. And their main thing is opening up casinos. So here, these are the different sides. I'm not, and unlike Rocking Horse Dreams video, I haven't played through this yet. I'm still on, you know, very early on. So I'm kind of, and it's been a while since I played Andy in a bit, so it's, I'm kind of getting it back into my head. What's going on? Um, Andy in a bit, there, there's, there's kind of natural allies, but you, you kind of ally and compete with everyone. Um, this game is no different. The natural alliances are different, though. So in Andy and Abyss, you had a natural alliance of the blue, which is the government player in both games, and the yellow, which is the, the right-wing um, organization in um, Andy and Abyss, the AUK. In this, and then you had the, the communists and the... Um, the cartel working together. In this, it's the government and the syndicate are more friends, and then the two guerrilla operations work together. And a, but a, a, of course, there's only one win, winner. So there's just kind of natural alliances. Like, so the the syndicate here, they can um, move government pieces around to protect them and um, benefit from government protection from the cartels, or not from the cartels, from the um, the guerrillas. Uh, the, the, yeah, the other insurgents. Um, and, then, and then the government, 
they benefit from that because they can skim money off the top of the syndicate's operations as long as they have majority control of a, of a, um, a syndicate space. So here during the propag propaganda phase, they ended up getting all this, the um, syndicate's money that they would have gotten from this casino. Now, if the syndicate had two there, they wouldn't have gotten all their money. So that's kind of fun for them. Though anyone who has control of a space can do that. It's just more likely that the government's going to have control. I have a feeling, though, that this game, this particular plane of the game, is going to be atypical. Um, I think they're normally atypical, but this one's fairly atypical. I think that um, the uh, 26th July is doing better than they normally would be doing at this point. Or they have a stronger presence down here. They've actually kind of taken control almost of um, Santiago de Cuba. And actually also the um, Directorio is doing better than I think they would too. It's just kind of how the cards came up and the decisions that were made and the fact that the propaganda phase happened so quick uh, worked in their favor. So I don't think I explained the game very well at all. I, I have a hard time uh, wanting to explain the rules again since I kind of already did that in a different video for Andy and Abyss. Um, so maybe I'll just kind of go with it and talk about what's different. Instead of having all those low locations of control LOCs that they had, which were kind of like roads um, with little bubbles that had numbers in them in Andy and Abyss, you have more specific, like kind of big economic centers. And there's only three of them. And I, and that's something you'll notice about the whole map um, altogether. It's all very much smaller and kind of more manageable, I guess, um, visually speaking. It's all right here. There's not a bunch of different areas to think about. There's not all these lines to think about with bubbles. So my, my inclination is probably a good place to start if you want to start playing the coin series with a, with a, with a steady group. And that's my plan. Um, let's look at some of the other features on the map. Oh, I could talk about this. This is a very, very kind of, this is the big way the game plays. So you have all these symbols here on the card. Uh, the game plays with cards, but they're not in your hand down on the table you can see the card that's active and then the card that's coming up so you kind of have some idea of what's coming up and you can make decisions based on that the card that's active it's going to have these symbols here okay the one furthest to the left they get first first dibs on the card now they can either um, they have three different options or actually four because it can also pass the reason why you pass is one maybe you really want to use the next card um, two you get some resources for, for passing, which can be useful. And if you, you know, if you tap out of resources, which can happen if you spend them all, thinking you're gonna get more resources, then sometimes you just have to do that. Um, so you can, you can do an action, or you can do the event on the card. Very CDG thing, even though this is not a standard CDG game. Um, and then based on what you choose to do, the second person who goes has a series of choices. Now they can also pass as well, right? But um, chances are they won't or they might. Uh, actions are different for each side, which is fun. Cubes have a general, generally broader or a more different menu of choices than cylinders. Uh, so you can see they're all here. They're all laid out pretty nice. Um, once you know the game, this, this thing is pretty helpful. This is about all you need to remember to play. And I could almost have just jumped into this with just this, having known Andy and Abyss. Um, there's a few more different things, a few little different things like this alliance thing. And then during the propaganda phase, you kind of have to turn to the rule book to help you, I think. Um, okay, so while we're talking, okay, so yeah, that's how that works. I won't go into depth about all the different choices you have, but that's that's kind of the basic flow. And then um, after you've made a choice, say these two ended up playing on the card, then they'd go here, and it, these two would be the only ones to have dibs on this next card, because these are ineligible until this whatever this card is. I don't want to turn it over, because um, I'm playing. All right, we look up here, we have the US Alliance. This is important to the, the Cuban government, uh, Batista. This basically decides, it gives you an aid penalty if it goes down, and it also decides how many points it costs to do an action, or how much money it costs, to, how many resources it costs to do an action. The um, insurgents, it costs one for most actions, except for, I think, building casinos costs five. Uh, the government, it costs two if the US is really supporting you. It costs four if they dislike you, and it also bars airstrikes, so you, you lose some capabilities. How does this go down? The main way it goes down is if your um, total support, 
which is the support from the, the country, uh, is below 18 when a propaganda card comes up. Turns out, you know, the, the I keep wanting to call him the FARC and the AUK, but 26 July and the directorial had a, had a strong, strong sprint to start off and then the propaganda card came up, so government kind of got hit. Um, what else? You lose some aid if that goes down too. So not a good start for the government, which is too bad for them because they tend, you know, they start off strong, and if they're they're losing that strength already, that's that's not good. Um, yeah, my inclination is that I think the yellow player, even though, so 26 July is my birthday, so I kind of have a, I think I feel like I would want to be the red player, but I think I. In Indian Abyss, I prefer to play the yellow player, and I think in this game I would too. Although usually when I play with people, I'll probably be the government because they seem to be the most complicated in some ways, or they kind of have the most most things to deal with. Um, whereas yellow is more limited, and you can kind of focus on just moving around and stuff. So that seems fun. Uh, what more can I babble about this game? Um, I guess I could I could just talk about board positions and the, the different different relationships. Or maybe I should just do some playing. I don't know. These big bubbles are cities. There are cities. Uh, these are provinces. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should just do some playing. No, I'm not going to do some playing. I'm going to talk about this track here. This track is a, a track of numbers, and these numbers can refer to different things depending on what's sitting on the track. So these cylinders here refer to resources, so the government has the most money right now. Um, but I, I expect that maybe these fellows here, the syndicate, will end up with more. If they're anything like the cartel was in Indian Abyss, they're, they're all about the money. And that's one of their victory conditions. So we'll segue into victory conditions. Their victory conditions are they have to have seven or, or no, they have to have eight or more open casinos. Casinos can be open or closed, but they can't be destroyed, which is kind of fun. They're, the, they're a different kind of base um, in the Indian Abyss. And I expect also a distant plane, a base is a base is a base. But here they have special bases embossed with money. Um, and they also have to have a certain amount of money, more than 30. The um, FARC, not the FARC, the 26th July, they have to have um, opposition. Opposition is determined by uh, this times this. So active opposition. If something's actively opposed to the government, it's better for the 26th July than if they're passively opposed, which is flipped over. And there are lots of ways to change that. Terror, different effects will change the opposition. Um, you can also spend money to do it during the propaganda phase, but you have to have control of the space, and that's where control comes in. Here's control here. So opposition plus bases. Bases are these disks here. So right now they have two from that. Uh, dirt that. One from that, that's three. And then three bases, six. So they're not doing that well. They kind of got a good hold here, but if the government gets their stuff together, they can put the hammer down. It's uh, generally if you're an insurgent, it's not always the best idea to be clumped in one space. It'll be fun to see what happens though. Um, the government, they just need total support. So they need the opposite of what 26 July needs, except they don't count their bases. Their bases aren't, um, yeah, they're, they're not figured into victory. They're useful though, because otherwise if they don't have bases down during propaganda phase, they, their cubes have to go back. So if they want to get a foothold somewhere, they got to put a base down. Um, what is the final thing? Oh yeah, the not the AUK, the Directorio. They need uh, a population, just straight population of places where they have control um, plus the number of bases. So they're actually close to victory right now, it looks like, but they, they're kind of on a different scale because they're they're kind of a weaker organization overall, so their scale is from zero to ten. <laughs> That's really their 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 points. I guess they could get above ten. Um, so straight population one plus three, two is three plus one is four that they control, and then they also have two bases down. So that's six. No, did I do that wrong? I think I, I gave them one extra. No, four plus two is six. I gave them. Six. No, I had it right. So I was looking at their cylinder instead. So that's great. So we're go we just finished the propaganda phase. We're, we're here now. The government's going to decide 
Okay, map. I like that that, that is a, a thing. Arm shipment stolen. Replace a cube with two gorillas. Don't think they want to do that. Or they could get momentum. Until propaganda, government may accompany limited ops with a free special activity. That's nice. Oh, I didn't talk about special activities. So there's regular basic actions here, and then there's special accompanying activities. If you pick the right thing here, like if you pick this one, you can do a special activity, which is like a bonus power. Or sometimes you can just do one of these. So the government has to decide if they want to take that. Now, if they take that, or if they, they use it to do an action, and then... Uh, next card that they won't be able to do anything on this. Move all twenty. Oh, it's from a city other than Havana. This might be good for the government to hold off and try to get this thing. Now, what they could also do is they could try to bribe the car, the, not the cartel, but the um, what are they called? The syndicate to pass this turn and do this this action here to remove all these pieces here and give them some, some breathing space. That might be an interesting idea. Uh, one thing that's great about this game and doesn't really come through necessarily just in the rules description, but um, negotiation is huge in this game. Um, partially because of the, you know, it kinda, you can mitigate some of the tough choices you have to make with whether or not to plan a particular card by offering someone else money to do it, and the money is freely exchanged. I think that's the only good that's exchanged. I don't think you can exchange other stuff. I, I guess you could exchange cash, which is the same as um, cocaine that you, you had in the Indian Abyss. Um, but maybe not. I would have to check on that. Okay, so here's what went down. The government, uh, they didn't, they picked to do the event primarily because because they, well, the event was nice, but they didn't want anyone to replace their cubes. They didn't have a lot of cubes on their board. Maybe what, maybe it would have been best if they just didn't worry about that. Uh, but they kind of thought maybe they would get July 26th to play on this card, and then they could have their syndicate buddies um, use this card and offer them money. It turned out, though, that July 26th did not buy. The syndicate passed, um, like, well, they'll get a dollar for that, and they'll get to act on the next card. And it doesn't hurt them to remove these pieces and get some money from the government. Uh, July 26th also passed, though, because this looks like a nice card for them to use. Um, so pretty much everyone kind of won out on the exchange other than the government. The um, directorial got some more pieces down, uh, did some rallying. And that's kind of how it all shook out. So then what we would do is we would take this, and what we are doing is we're taking this and putting it there. I'm going to put this up here to remember that the government ha does have this power, so maybe that'll come into play um, and turn this next one up. So here if we look at this card, uh, the event is pretty tasty for 26 July. They can make something adjacent to this space here automatically active opposition. Um, so that could be helpful to do here, although um, Directorio, they're really good at bringing things down to neutrality. And this is, um, by doing that, they also get some money. So it maybe isn't the best move to do it here. Uh, it's, it seems tempting to do it to a city, but I don't know. I don't know. They're close to control, so they probably, they might not do the event here. However, if they don't do the event, what are their choices? They can do the opt with special activity, in which case someone else can do the event, or they can opt not to use the special ability for their op. <laughs> I'm going to try to use opt and op as frequently as possible um, for clarity. And then that would uh, limit the second person to just limited options, limited ops. They would only be able to opt for limited ops if the first faction opts for... Um, ops with no special activity. The 26th July did opt for the limited op with no special activity. They used that to rally in both, in pretty much just the east here, the southeast region. Um, they were able to uh, rally in Santiago de Cuba as well. So they're going to be able to hopefully hold this and then change it over um, to active opposition next propaganda phase. That's kind of their, their strategy. And then built another base here. So they're, they're working on their scoring potential getting up to here. They're going to have to spread out, though, eventually, if they're going to want to get it over 16. That's their, their special victory zone. That's kind of what they're going for. Um, 
the syndicate rather than pass again. They could have passed and got another point or another uh, another resource. They saw that on the next card, they probably weren't going to get to act either or even be able to pass on the next card. So they figured to opt for the limited op and just built a casino here in Havana. Um, remember, they need to get at least eight out on the board. And now that they have two there, they're going to be able to make some money, even though that the government's going to skim it off the top. Uh, Rereading their, their operations, I saw that they can build casinos anywhere that the government controls as well as themselves. And I think um, from Rockin' Horse Dreams, a Distant Plains video, I think there's some, some more intertwining like that in a distant plane as well that wasn't in that that I don't remember from Andy and Abyss where you have some things that it's specifically states you can do it with a particular other particular another faction whereas um, Andy and Abyss I think it was it all had to do with support what the support level was at um, for everybody all right so now it's the government's turn at bat once again they're going to be thinking about Rolando Mass Ferrer um, Looking at the next card, they see that they also have first dibs. No one is is going to be able to do the event to hurt them. They don't feel um, so. They think the best situ case, uh, the best move for them right now would be to pass. That's going to give them three. One, two, three. The government's on a different money scale than everyone else because uh, they're the government, and that does two things. One, it um, it's going to freeze one of their opponents. Uh, 26 July actually from having first first dibs on the next card and the the only cost to them really um, other than you know cards gone by that they haven't acted is that uh, these fellows are going to get to act none of these are going to get the secondary function so that's helpful to them so now we have the um, directorio they get to decide what they want to do with it the event isn't too attractive. They're not going to be able to do anything on the next card, very most likely in the back. The, the back. So they're going to be doing a full operation plus special activity. They could also just pass and get a, a dollar, but that, that doesn't seem very attractive to them. So let's look at their, their position. They have some good stuff going here. Um, this is their area. They could converge on uh, La Habana down here. Uh, it seems like they want to be moving now, right? They want to move and kind of extend their territory because they're not going to be able to... Well, let's see. Let's do some figuring. If they did a rally, they could... And, uh, yeah, they need to They need to get some more spaces in their control. Um, they're not going to be able to get this. The city looks possible. Um, damaging these ECs is useful for getting rid of the government. So they might want to think about that. I think what they're going to be doing is they're going to be marching and doing some sort of attack move. So that's going to be fun. Let's let's let them draw first blood. El, El Directorio made what I think is probably a foolish move, but time will tell. Uh, the thing is, is you can leave yourself open um, in games and not necessarily suffer. I, f I found that with this game because people have so much, so many things that they're dealing with. Um, this could this could hurt them though they're pretty open here they took they converged their cylinders here in La Habana problem with it is it's right next to Havana and that's kind of the the government's center of power so they could sweep down there and knock them out now if they don't if the government doesn't that could be very good for um, El Directorio because not only um, do they ha they have the spot in their control which boosts them up but there's a casino there so by having control of that they're going to be able to skim off the top and get some more money they don't make a lot of money um they do make more than 26 july though 26 july really has a hard time making money unless they um they do some kidnapping uh, so that's the situation there interesting card came up i want to talk about this that's next we have to this is the one that's going to be dealt with immediately. But Pact of Caracas. So this is one, um, and I noticed there was another card like this. I don't think I played it. Uh, but what it does is it does something that kind of affects it. Oh, no, I did play it. It does something that affects everyone, but then it um, doesn't change the person who did the event's eligibility. So I think the government did one last time. They gave everyone two pieces to put on the map. That's one reason the map looks kind of maybe weird to you if you know the game. Um, and it didn't change their eligibility. Now, unfortunately, they did that right before the propaganda card, I think. Uh, so this Pact of Caracas, this mainly, it primarily makes it so that the red and yellow players can't hurt each other um, unless they 
decide to remove two bases. So they have to kind of hurt themselves in order to break this treaty. That could really change things up. Um, I have to think about whether it'd be in everyone's interest. It seems like, I mean, they don't really want to be bothering with each other. But then, I don't know, 26 July is in a good position to maybe maybe put down um, El Directario if they get too big for their britches. Because this is kind of their main seat of power right by 26 July. Though, I guess the government could hit them in a couple of places. It might help them to force the government to deal with um, El Directorio. They're kind of risking it. Because if the government isn't able to do it, then El Directorio wins the game. And that's kind of my predilection. I, I always want the yellow player to win for some reason uh, in this game, in this series. All right, pretty fun card. The government trained in two spaces and then did a transport over to here. So they brought some troops in. They decided to deal with this area. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, you've got the centers of power of both of their primary opponents. Uh, the syndicate has a long ways to go in terms of opening things. And the government just paid them to help them out. Paid them to do the SIM, the SIM, which lets their police sweep and assault. That's going to be useful to the government right now because they're, you know, they've got a lot of police on the table and a lot of uh, fires to put out. Oh, I guess the fires aren't really burning. They're just amassing flames. So now that's going to bring us to um, the port of Caracas and it's going to be 26th of July's turn to choose. I hear a roaring upstairs, so I think I need to be done.